Hi, these are some Berto's hints for Chapter 4, Supply and Demand. And I want to point out a couple of things about our traditional um, supply and demand diagram. The first is something that the books don't really point out, but it's kind of important in, in how you see the graph, and that is that the axes, how they are set up, is opposite of what you probably are expecting. If you stop to think about it, um, supply and demand... Um, both model quantity as a function of price. In other words, if price goes up or down, then this happens to demand, this happens to supply. However, um, you would expect then to have the, uh, let's see if I can use the pointer here, the, um, the price, which is the cause variable, would normally appear on the independent variable, the, uh, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, whatever, however you want to think of it. And the effect variable of the quantity would appear on the y-axis, the vertical or the, the usual dependent variable. Here, they are reversed. The reason they are reversed is that Alfred Marshall, who is the first economist to draw a supply and demand diagram, finish just drawing a standard one here, um, which was around the year 1900, uh, was a originally a mathematician, and he simply didn't follow these normal conventions here about uh, independent and dependent variables on the x or y axis. He was just doing something for the footnotes, just thinking to himself. The graph was picked up and became standard, and so it has been that way ever since. So even though quantity is indeed a function of price, we keep price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. So that's uh, Berto's hint um, for chapter 4.